Hills View High School on the map officially in Class 2A. And the Westview Warriors go to 25-3 and three on the year. Troy Neely wins his second state championship. to Rensburger, and he puts it in off the glass. Now he'll pump it up from the left side and hit. We get the trap. That's trouble when you find Yoder that wide open. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Fairfield High School as we get set for the boys' action out between the Fairfield Falcons and the Westview Warriors. The girls, the Westview girls were defeated by Fairfield 58 to 41 in game one, so it's off to game two now. Tonight's game is brought to you by Tiffany's Restaurant on East Lake Street in Topeka, featuring nightly specials and a delicious buffet. By Hyde Auto Body, US 20 West in LaGrange. By Topeka Do It Best Hardware at the Blinker Light in downtown Topeka. Also by Topeka Pharmacy, your friendly hometown pharmacy. By Dale's Dependable Handyman Service. Dale's the right man for the job. By Freedom Finish Works in Topeka, your local source for powder coating. By Lehman Insurance and Financial Group in Topeka, their passion is protecting yours. By Jerry's Standard Service in Middlebury for your automotive repair and tire service needs. Also by Lake City Bank with over 50 branches in northern and central Indiana. By Topeka Clinic, introducing Yana Schenkel, certified nurse midwife, now accepting appointments. And our halftime show and gold sponsor is Weaver Furniture Sales, south of US 20 on County Road 075 North in Chipchawana. Our individual sponsors are Tim and Donna Height, Dan and Don Byler, Jim and Liz Stump, and Oscar and Sophia Hostetler. And Jamie will be back with the interview with Coach Rob. Oh, okay, so there won't be a an interview tonight but jamie and i'll be back at fairfield high school to talk about the boys game coming up between the fairfield falcons and the westview warriors right after this 30 second timeout we can do keys remodeling in the near future dale fry at dale's dependable handyman service is the right man for the job get a new look for your bathroom kitchen garage attic or anywhere else in your house Dale is fully trained, licensed, and insured. No subcontractors, just Dale and his son, Owen, will do the job. Call 260-463-3970 or visit dalesdependablehandyman.com. Jerry Hostetler with Jamie Miller back with you at Fairfield High School where it'll be the Fairfield Falcons under head coach Randy Deshaun in his first year as coach, head coach of the Fairfield Falcons has compiled a four and eight record coming into tonight's ball game. Fairfield is three and one in the Northeast Corner Conference in their last outing, they were defeated by Westview in the Northeast Corner Conference tournament 75 to 44. Westview, head coach, of course, Rob Yoder, 291 wins, 124 losses, coming off a defeat against uh, I had Fairfield down here. No, they were defeated by Prairie Heights last week. 
And that sent their record to nine wins and three losses on the season. And they are four and one in the Northeast Corner Conference. They come in ranked 11th in the state in AP rankings this year in the two-way rankings. So it's Westview nine and three against Fairfield at four and eight in game two here tonight. And Jamie will be back with the keys to our game tonight right after this 60 second timeout. Weaver Furniture Sales in Shipshawana invites you to visit their expanded showroom filled with a complete line of solid hardwood custom made furniture for your entire home. You'll also find a wide selection of recliners, couches, chairs, and many more home furnishings to suit anyone's taste. Weaver Furniture, located just south of US Highway 20 on County Road 75 North. Weaver Furniture sales in Shipshawana, family owned and operated since 1989. Freedom Finish Works in Topeka specializes in both steel and aluminum. Their 40,000 square foot custom powder coat facility has the flexibility to run everything from one piece custom orders to full production quantities. They also have the unique capabilities of powder coat, class coat, as well as other highly durable coatings. They are your local source for powder coating. Freedom Finish Works in Topeka. Call 260-593-0204. All right, back at Fairfield High School, eagerly anticipating the tip-off uh, between these two rivals. There is five minutes to go in warm-ups. Let's take a look at the keys to the game tonight. You know, when you play an opponent that you just played two, three weeks ago, it's it's a little unique. Uh, so some of the things, obviously, we want to do the same. <laughs> Score a lot more points. Uh, number one, we want to limit the touches for Nolan Cherick. I think that was one of the keys last yep. time. I thought we could have done a little better job. We did a good job to start the game, and then as, as things got going, Nolan's just, you know, he's too good and too active of a player to completely shut him down. But if you can limit what he does, that really helps it stop their offense a little bit. Number two, value the basketball. And this is a program uh, key all the time, but especially against a team like Fairfield on their home, uh, home court, you don't want to give them anything easy. And giving them anything easy starts a lot of times with a turnover. So don't turn the ball over. Don't give them transition, easy baskets. Make them work for what they get. And number three, we need to have poise. As we're sitting here with our headphones on, we can barely hear the band right. is so loud. And just the way this gym is built, it gets really loud in here, which it makes does. it fun. But, uh, you know, when things don't go our way, when shots don't fall or they get an easy shot or a nice play and the crowd goes crazy, we need to keep our poise, stay mentally tough, and just come back down and do what we're supposed to do. So those are some of the keys that we need to start with. And if we execute them, you know, we I remember distinctly the last game, we outscored them very consistently each quarter. Right. And it was like five points, then six, then seven. In the last quarter, it got kind of blown open, and we ended up with a 30-point game. So if you just count that last quarter like the other three, it easily could have been a 20-point game. Now you're turning around and playing a few weeks later on Fairfield's home court. I would expect a closer game tonight. I would I expect us so. to have yeah. to be a little grittier. and Not that we weren't gritty last time, but it, stuff doesn't come quite as easy sometimes the second time you play, especially away from home. And Fairfield, I think just a natural inclination to be more motivated after they've lost and then get another shot at redemption is going to be a big factor. So we just need to play fundamentally. One good thing about Westview under Rob is we've, we've always been consistent. In other words, there's some teams out there that when they play at home, they're guaranteed 10 points better than right. when they play on the road. And I think we've been fairly consistent with, uh, with that in the program. So we just need to come out here and, and do the best that we can uh, according to what we practiced. It's always fun, these Fairfield Westview matchups. And it's gonna be another one tonight. Good jam-packed Fairfield gymnasium. This is what high school basketball is all about. We got the pep band going, gym's packed. Fans yeah. for both sides. It really is. I've done, I, uh, I don't know if you're on the, the Facebook site for Indiana first night, forget the um, title of it, but basically it talks about Indiana high school basketball around the state, and there's always folks posting on there that when there's full crowds and how it makes them feel good and remember the old days, and this is one of those nights. So it's loud, the, the, uh, the ends are packed, the sides are pretty full, and 
Should be a good ball game tonight. Should be. We'll be back with more from Fairfield High School as we get ready for the boys game tonight between the Fairfield Falcons and the Westview Warriors. We'll take a 30 second break and we'll be right back with you. Mouth-watering home-cooked meals, nightly specials, large buffet, breakfast buffet on Saturday, chicken, shrimp, and beef brisket on Saturday night, and Tuesday's lunch chicken buffet. These are what you'll find at Tiffany's Restaurant in Topeka. Top off your meal with a slice of their delicious homemade pie. That's Tiffany's Restaurant on East Lake Street in Topeka. For carry-out orders, call 260-593-2988. Jamie, you had a chance to talk to Coach Yoder. You couldn't get that interview played here tonight, but what did Coach right. have to say? Well, we talked about what he learned about his team during the NCC week. You know, what did he either get confirmed or learn? And I think the big takeaway there is we're we're consistent and we're we've improved enough that we can um, not just hang with, but beat really good teams right. on back-to-back -back nights. You know, we've played very evenly with the top of the NECC conference. And coming into the year, I don't know that that was a given. And so just the maturation of the of the crew and how they, you know, Prairie Heights played a good game. They beat us. But there's a few points we left out there we'd like to have back sure. that, were, that we could have easily had. So we're right there. And then this week they just worked on, you know, working. I think they were, they're uh, tweaking a few things on offense, putting in some new new sets, new plays, new um, new plans out there so that they can take advantage of some of the maybe skill that's blossomed in recent months, re weeks. And, uh, you know, I think he didn't mention any names. We can probably think maybe Brady. You know, he's come out and been a real strong right. offensive player for us. Drew and is so forth. Drew did a great job last game. In fact, he outscored Charlie. I mean, that's offensively. Yeah, you know, exactly. But, uh, yeah, so, Brady's been good defensively and offensively, so. So you want to take advantage of those players and their skills. And this, when you have a whole week off like that, kind of before the stretch run of your season, that's a good time to, good time to do that. Right. Okay, let's take a look at our starting lineups tonight. First of all, for the Westview Warriors. And we are doing live audio, and you'll be able to watch the ball game later on a delayed basis. Charlie Yoder is first out for Westview, averaging 28 points per game. Blake Eggway. Did Blake come out? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Charlie went out further than everybody else. All That's right. why it looked like he didn't come out. Drew Littweiler and Luke Miller, or rather Lyndon Miller. And who did I miss? Burkett? Now we got Blake, Charlie, Maybe got Luke, Lyndon, and Drew. Okay, Luke was out there. Yep. Yes. Now they've turned off the lights and they're uh, introducing the Fairfield Falcons now. Ladies and gentlemen, stand and cheer for your fifth. I don't even think I'd have to announce them. You, you could hear the announcer. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a, a high quality sound system. It you is. That right. Senior number three, Justin. Justin Bodtrigger wearing number three to be one of the starting guards. Also starting for Fairfield will be Riley Bayonis, number 20, a 5'10 senior. Of course, senior Nolan Cherry, their leading scorer, six foot even senior, number 21. Also starting for Fairfield will be Ball, number 23, a six-point senior. The head coach for Fairfield, of course, as I mentioned, Randy Deshaw, he's a veteran head coach, very successful. Then at Jimtown, Elkhart Central, and now Fairfield, he has a, a 266 win, 234 loss record. Bryce Willard was the last fan to be introduced. 5'10 senior for Fairfield. And we're ready to go. Dan Byler whistling in the background, and we get set for basketball in a jam-packed 
Fairfield High School Gymnasium. Well, between the sound system and Dan, I think <laughs> maybe a mile outside this gym, they might be able to hear us tonight. They it's could hear us <laughs> in the Westview parking lot. I, I think. need a double headphone tonight. Is that possible? <laughs> Charlie Yoder and Nolan Sherrick going up center court. Tip is controlled by Westview. Handed to Charlie from Lyndon Miller. Charlie. I'm interested to see how uh, Deshaun attacks Westview defensively compared to what they did last time. Westview swinging it around the perimeter. Luke hands it off to Charlie right at the top of the circle. Goes to the free throw line and he stumbles a little bit and gets called for traveling. Yeah, when you make that jump back, you got to land with both feet at the same time. And like you said, whether he got tripped or whatever, he, he kind of one tooed it and that'll get a call sometimes. Like his feet might have got tangled up a little bit. With the ball out front is Gall. He'll go right side with it to Bond Trigger. Bond Trigger bounce passes it out front to Bayless. Bayless fakes the handoff to Willard, holds on, and gives right side to Justin Bond Trigger. Once again, we're not able to do live video from Fairfield High School, and that'll be the same case tomorrow night down at Garrett. We'll bring you delayed video, live audio. Pass inside to Sherrick, and shot's no good, and Litweiler battles it out of there. Gives it to Lyndon Miller down to Charlie Yoder. Left side of Luke, he'll take it in strong, and we have a blocking foul, and the basket will count for Luke. Yeah, I think that's a really good call. That's one of those that are in the heat of the game early on. Right in front of the opposing student section, a referee might be inclined to make the pop. Yeah, call. that's true. It's right there but in front of the, the student section. But yeah, he wasn't quite planted, and he actually did fall a little bit before he got hit there. So that was the right call. Willard committed the foul. Shots missed, but Lyndon Miller pulls down the rebound for Westview. Blake Egley out front. Looks to Charlie between the circles. He'll go right to Egley, wide open for three, and it's going to be a little long. And now we have uh, a foul that's going to be called on Westview on the block out. And that's going to be Litweiler. Well, Fairfield knows that Westview's always going to be aggressive going to the offensive boards. That's just a trademark of our program. And so they're blocking out well early on. That time I thought Willard rid him, rode him out a little bit. Yeah, he, you. he ended up on uh, Willard's back. Drew did. Double team inside. Sherrick still gets a shot off. Misses. And the rebound's pulled down by Lyndon Miller to Charlie Yoder to Drew Litweiler on the baseline. Back out on the wing to Charlie. Three in the air by Luke from the top of the circle. No good, and the rebound's pulled down by Fairfield. Gall inside, shots up. No good off the back of the iron. Drew Litweiler skies for the rebound for the Warriors. Well, Fairfield's getting close looks right now. Three layups, three misses, but Charlie in there, his long arms have kind of altered, I think, the trajectory of them. Charlie gives to Blake, out front over come to Charlie. A long three is nothing but net for Charlie Oder. Five to nothing Westview. 5.40 to go in the first quarter. Three by Fairfield's off the mark. Tipped out, but right into the hands of Litweiler. Good strong block out by Blake that time. He was getting held and mauled, but held him off enough. Charlie out front, it'll come to Luke Miller. Left side, Lyndon Miller, his shots from three is no good. Charlie with the offensive rebound, put back strong, no good, tipped out to Luke. Westview dominating on the offensive board so far. Litweiler from the corner, his shots way off the mark and the rebound, Nola Sherrick. Fairfield in transition, Sherrick gets reached in on from behind by Lyndon Miller and he picks up the foul. Well, I think what we're seeing out there with Westview's oh, offense, Westview, we talked 31. before about how we want to go inside out, get it in the and lane first, throw it in the post, and we're really not doing that. We're moving it pretty good, but we're really not getting an inside to, to draw the defense. The shots we have are open, but maybe this is just a bias, but this has always been kind of a tough gym to shoot in, I think. And early in the game, uh, you, you want to get inside and get some easy shots. It is. It's a smaller gym, a lot of noise. White background. But, right. Cade Gall. Sherrick has it tipped as he tried to get it inside on the pass to Riley Bayless. Goes out of bounds. It'll stay in the hands of Fairfield. They'll inbound from the corner. 
just to the left of the Westview bench and inbounding will be Cade Gall, a six foot senior for Fairfield. I think what we see with Nolan early on, I think he seems more aggressive in this game. He's going to the basket. He's trying to get shots around the rim. Nolan with uh, Luke Miller on him out front, picks up his dribble, gives off right side to Owen Miller. Owen Miller bounce passes it right side to Riley Bayless. Bayless takes it down almost to the baseline, and he's double teamed down there. Feeds Sherrick. Sherrick tries to go to the hoop, tied up, gives it off, shots up, and off the glass. And do it by Owen Miller with 6 1 sophomore. Well, we trapped him in there, but that's Nolan Strengths just won that battle, and he was able to get it out of there for a nice pass. Charlie Yoder, and we have a blocking foul that's going to be called on Fairfield as Charlie. Drove it up to the top of the key and was looking for the pass. One thing I've seen early on again for Fairfield is they're trying to make Charlie go right. And they know his, his dominant and his preference is to always go left. And that time they anticipated his move and almost got the call. 5-2, Westview with the basketball and the lead. Pass comes to Luke Miller. Now to Blake Egley. His shot from three is no good. Tipped out of bounds and it'll belong to Fairfield. Mason Yoder and Brady Yoder coming in for Westview as Blake Egley and Lyndon Miller will check out. Justin Bontrager coming back in for Fairfield and Riley Bayless will come out. Inbound pass comes to Nolan Sherrick and Nolan will bring it up slowly. Now he'll give it to uh, Gall. Cade Gall across the timeline, works left side. Sherrick now right side to Miller, Owen Miller in the corner, and Drew Littweiler picks it up on the air ball. Drew brings it up across the timeline. We're in a 1-2-2 two, two that time with half-court traps, and one thing we always want to do against Fairfield is kind of speed up their shooters, and I think we did at that time. Drew on the wing right side feeds it inside to Luke Miller, right back out between the circles of Charlie. Charlie pulls up the free throw line and gives off right side to Luke again. He bounce passes into Mason, right back to Charlie, top of the key. Left side to, Eggler, or to Brady, his shot, no good. Tipped up, no good. Tipped around, grabbed by Mason. What work on the boards by Westview in the early going on the offensive side. Yeah, it's Foul a good call. sign when we're battling each other for the offensive board and not some Fairfield player. Right. Well, it's a good sign if you're a Westview fan. Exactly. Put it that way. <laughs> Dalton Cripe comes in. He saw a lot of playing time last week in that game over at Westview in the NACC tournament. Charlie Yoder triggers it in for Westview. Lobs it into Mason. Right side to Charlie. Back out front to Mason. Now to Brady. Bounce pass left side of the go to Luke Miller. He'll cross court it to Drew. Now Charlie at the elbow. His shot is no good. And rebounds pulled down by Justin Bontrager. Now into the hands of Nolan Sherrick. In the corner to go to Miller. And his shot from three is no good. Charlie pulls down the rebound. Westview in transition. Pass to Mason. And he puts it in off the glass. Well, that's where Mason's athleticism really paid off. He beat everybody down the court. Nice little dump off by Charlie. 7-2, Westview by five. Two minutes and 28 seconds. We have an offensive foul that's going to be called on Dalton Cripe as he fought for position. Good defense by Westview. Cripe picks up his first foul. Linden back into the ball game. And he'll come in for his brother, Luke. Brady Yoder will inbound right in front of official score, Roger Yoder of Westview. Drew Miller, or Drew Litweiler with it, gets it down inside of Charlie Yoder in the baseline, out of Brady for three outside, and Brady hits. And I think that might be one of those plays Coach is talking about this week of, of working on and putting in. Another offensive foul called on Fairfield. Cade Gall had position underneath, and. Put his shoulder down. Pretty obvious call that time by the official. Yeah, wow, what a spark here in the last 30 seconds by Brady. You take two charges and hit a three. <laughs> right. That, that, that's true. That was his second charge. You as can't well. get much more productive than that. Linden underneath on the feed, knee hit. One down, we'd see a time. Yep, we're going to see one right now. Timeout by Fairfield. 
Westview 12 to 2 with a minute and 55 seconds to go in the opening quarter. We'll be back with more right after this 60 second timeout. If you're looking to replace or repair your home appliances, Topeka Do It Best Hardware is your local stop for Amana, Maytag, and Whirlpool appliances. Featuring in-home and in-store service and parts on most makes of home appliances. See JJ for all your appliance needs at Topeka Do It Best Hardware, an authorized Whirlpool and Maytag service center for over 40 years, located at the Blinker Light in downtown Topeka. Call them at 260-593-2973. Have you ever been unpleasantly surprised by a purchase and wish you had done more investigation before buying? Gold Key Home Inspections is here to help give you peace of mind about one of your largest investments, your home. Our inspectors are trained to expertly evaluate all aspects of your potential home and give you information to use in making an informed decision. Don't gamble on your future. Give Gold Key Home Inspections a call today to set up your appointment. And we're back at Fairfield High School, ready to resume action after the timeout. Fairfield finds himself in a 10-point hole here, 12 to two to Westview. Well, I think this one, two, two has kind of taken Fairfield out of what they want to do. Nolan Cherry drives it into the paint, puts it up and good, and he's fouled. He'll go to the free throw line to try to complete the three-point play. Talk about the announcer's curse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now they Fairfield adjusted that time. Nolan was planted in the middle and get it to him, and he's their best player in there, and he made a nice play. Sherrick, the team's leading scorer. He had 13 points last week against Westview. And the game over at Westview. Shots up and good. And Nolan completes a three point play. Charlie Yoder brings it across the timeline for Westview. Looks right, goes that way on a pass to Lyndon Miller. Now to Litweiler inside. He'll make the move, puts it up, scores! That looked like a design play out of a timeout just for Drew. So you can see the last couple of possessions, one for Brady and one for Drew. They were talking about putting some sets and plays in to take advantage of them. Good post up by Drew inside, was able to get the shot. Shot from the baseline by Dalton Kripe is off the mark and Westview brings it back. Leading 14 to five, 65 seconds to go in the first quarter. Shot from three is no good by Charlie Yoder. Pulled down by Fairfield and back come the Falcons. Probably not the shot we were looking for so quick right there. That was a quick one. Yeah, that's a shot you can get literally any time you want it, but we want to try to get a better one than that early on. Cripe drives, puts it up off the glass too hard. Rebound and a putback short by Bontrager and pulled down by Charlie ahead to Mason and he lays it in. Mason with four off the bench. Ball knocked out of bounds. Good defense by Linda Miller. Into the ball game is Holden Blosser, 5'11 junior. Coming out is Owen Miller. Also coming out is Dalton Kripe. And re-entering the lineup for Fairfield is Bryce Willard. Sherrick gets the inbound pass. A shot from three is no good. Rebound Mason Yoder. Mason across the timeline, waits for his team to get back and he gives off to Lyndon Miller, now Charlie Yoder. Now Westview will Attempt to go for the last shot of the first quarter. And 15 seconds to go. Hawking on defense there is Bayless on Charlie. Six seconds, five seconds, four. And Miller gets the shot, misses it, tipped up and in. And I think they'll give it to Charlie. Yeah, I think Charlie got the rebound. Luke, or yeah, uh, Lyndon missed the layup and Charlie was there for the tip in. So we played the first eight minutes of basketball here at Fairfield, the boys game. The girls, Westview girls were defeated by Fairfield game one, 58-41. It's Westview 18, Fairfield five after the first quarter in the boys game. Back with the second quarter right after this 60 second timeout. Does your paint job need a refresh? Got too many dings and scratches? Let Hyde Auto Body take care of it for you. No matter the type of vehicle, motorcycle, trailer, or truck cap, Height Auto Body's experienced paint specialist will attend to every detail so you don't have to. 
We aim to be number one in customer service and your satisfaction is always guaranteed. We're located west of State Road 9 on US 20. Height Auto Body, a trusted name in the community for over 20 years. Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. Fairfield inbounds to begin the second quarter of play, trailing Westview 18 to five. We're still in our half court trap. Ball stolen away by Charlie. Now we have a tie up and we're gonna have, actually, was that a foul or a tie up? I think they're gonna call a foul yeah. on that. Looks like Charlie had him wrapped up. Yeah, you can't jump on a guy and wrap him from behind, no matter how long your arms are, right. get away with it. <laughs> good call by the official. He almost had that. 23 did a good job of reclaiming that possession. Gall gets it into Sherrick, and Sherrick tries to get it back to Gall, knocked away, and now an exchange brings it back to uh, Nolan Sherrick of Fairfield. They'll bring it back across the timeline. Another shot from the corner by Owen Miller, and this time it goes. His first three in Fairfield's first Yeah, that was a big of change of possession there. That was. I thought Nolan grabbed Charlie on the arm on the way on that steal, but if they didn't call it, he didn't do it. Charlie gets it out front to Burkett. Right side will come to Litweiler. Burkett into the ball game. Blake Egley came back in to begin the second quarter. Now it's fast down low to Litweiler on the baseline. He has Willard on him. He'll swing it down low to Charlie. Fall away jumper and he gets a roll. Nolan Sherrick now with the ball, drives toward the bucket, gives off to Owen Miller in the corner. Now he'll bring it out front. Gives back to Nolan, cross courts it underneath, shot up off the glass, no good by Bayless. Battle for the rebound, picked up by Willard. He can't get it to go. Another offensive rebound, and the putback is good. This time it's Owen Miller crashing in there and putting it in, and he's fouled. Well, you can see when we're dominating the offensive glass, we're getting extra points, and now Fairfield's hanging in there because they're getting offensive rebounds. Right. They did a bunch of them there. Willard comes out. Looks like he's shaking up a little bit. Back into the lineup is Justin Bontrager. And Owen Miller, a six-foot sophomore, at the free throw line trying to complete the three-point play, and he does. Yeah, their best offense right now, Fairfield's that is, is Nolan penetrating and kicking to the corners. Takes a lot of defensive effort to keep track of Nolan. And They've got some good shooters. Glitweiler misses underneath and tips it back up and in. I got to remember we're not on video. I got to allow you to talk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know it's a little bit of an adjustment for me too. Drew got in there for a short shot, missed it, and then tipped it in himself. Miller and Leather long three from the corner. That's good. Two threes for Owen Miller in this second quarter. 22-14 Westview by eight. Charlie, a long three is no good. Rebound, Luke Miller, he'll put it up, miss. A lot of contact, no call, but Nolan, Nolan Sherrick pulls it off the glass. He'll go right side to Bontrager. His long three, and he got it. Bounced way up in the air and came back through. So now Fairfield has chopped the Westview lead down to five, 22-17, five and a half minutes to go in the first half. Well, here's where we need our poise. Just work the ball, get a good shot. Blake, a quick three, no good. Pulled out of there by Nolan Sherrick. Fairfield in transition. Nolan picks up his dribble, goes to the corner, wide open, no good on the three by Justin Bontrager, and Westview comes up with it. Yeah, we're really not getting out on those shooters right now. I'm not uh, sure why we're so far away, but. Good pass underneath. Litweiler can't get it to go. Knocked away, but we got a foul on Fairfield. Well, it's getting fast and furious out there right now. It is. <laughs> the game looks a lot better when both teams are scoring, and that's what's happening right now. 
Fairfield on a mini run. I think it was, yeah, it was 18 to five at the end of the first, and so far this quarter, they've outscored us 12 to four. Litweiler at the free throw line. Drew's first shot, and he can't get it to go. He'll get one more. Back into the ball game for Fairfield is Cade Gall. Coming out is Riley Bayless. Also coming back in is Bryce Willard. We saw his sister play in game one here tonight, Bailey. Bailey a freshman, Bryce a senior. Drew's second shot, and it won't go. The rebound's pulled down by Gall. Gall will bring it up. Gets it across the timeline, works it left side, looking for help. Gets it inside to Owen Miller. He'll make the move on Litweiler, and Drew picks up the foul. Yeah, I'm a, that was a. That was on Westview, number 25, Drew Litweiler, to the line shooting two. They called Drew on the block there, but he had good position, and he waited till he shot it to go get block it, so that was a little surprising. But give Owen credit, he, he sought out contact that time and got the call. Shots up and good by Miller. Leads his team in scoring with 12. Half of those coming from beyond the arc. Brady Yoder will check back in for Westview. He'll come right back in. Before, uh, or he'll come in for Burkett. Miller will have another free throw attempt. 22 to 18. Westview's lead is now four. Just under five minutes to go in the first half. Second shot by Miller is good. Well, just like that, it's a one possession game. See, we had the ball with an 18-5 lead yeah, we on did. a fast break. Could have made it 15. Pass inside, knocked away, it goes out of bounds. Last touch by Westview underneath their own basket, so it'll be Fairfield basketball. Brady Willard will bring it in for the Falcons. Falcon. 20, Riley Bayless. Fairfield's cheer block dressed in Amish garb, mocking Westview, I guess. Fairfield inside. Nolan Sherry puts it up and good on the feed inside. And it's a one-point ball game now. Westview brings it up. Charlie between the circles. Looked like he was being pushed out. Pass inside to Linden. He'll put it up too hard off the glass. Tipped out, but we're going to have a foul over the going up over the, the back. And contact was made on Nolan Cherick. So Luke Miller will pick up his third foul. Yeah, we're a little bit in a rush to shoot right yeah. now. I think we uh, Westview kind of threw the ball at the basket that time instead of get a good shot. Fairfield in a bonus will come to the other end and Willard will go to the free throw line. The line shooting one and one for Fairfield is number 24, Bryce Willard. Well, it's the little things, you know, that make the difference in the game. All of a sudden, we've had a few turnovers. We've fouled. We've given up offensive rebounds. We're taking quick shots. And just like that, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a ball game again. So that's what keeps coaches up at night. That's why when there's a 15 or 20 point lead with two minutes to go, they're never happy. Willard missed his free throw. Westview brings it back. Inside pass from Luke Miller to Charlie. Back to Luke out front. Charlie, right side. Takes it to the baseline and feeds it out front. Blake left open and he hits a two. Nice job, Blake there. I think he was 0 for 4 up to that point. So that was a big confidence booster there. Well, it'll be surprised to see him at a three about next. That'll help. Owen Miller is held as he tries to drive the baseline. So once again, Fairfield will go to the free throw line. Lyndon Miller picks up the foul this time. That'll be Lyndon's first. Yeah, our issue right, it's kind of having issues on both ends of the court, but our defense is, Fairfield's figured us out a little bit and is doing a nice job of getting the shot they want. They've adjusted to what they saw last week. Shots missed again for the free throw line. Goes out of bounds. Last touch by Fairfield's Cade Gall. It'll be Westview ball underneath the Fairfield basket. That, that really hurts Fairfield. That's two straight one on ones they've missed. Yeah, they they could be in the lead here. Yes, they could. Charlie goes right side to Brady. Brady to Mason. 
Top of the circle will go to Charlie. Right side, Brady. A quick three is good. Second three of the night for Brady, the freshman. The thing I like about Brady is when he shoot, when he he's open, he's ready to shoot it. With the basketball, Bayless gets it to Willard. Willard to Sherrick. Sherrick left side, Owen Miller, another three. This time it's off the mark. Chased down by Willard. Willard gets it out front to Sherrick. Once again, Fairfield getting the offensive boards. Pass inside, and it's rejected by Mason Yoder, but he'll get fouled on the call with the body. Well, well, one of coaches' emphasis, if you're going to foul down low, don't give him the ball. Don't get the basket and the foul. <laughs> yeah. Mason made sure of that. That's yeah, he <laughs> did. There was no doubt that ball wasn't going up. That was like a volleyball spike right there. If it he would have had all ball, they would have called a foul there just because of the exaggerated motion. Right. With at the line, Cade Gall, and he misses again. Fairfield struggling for the free throw line. Yeah, he looks like he's struggling a little bit with that shoulder. And anytime you have a, something that looks a little bit off at the free throw line, it can affect you. And he got it that time. Yeah, he's definitely favoring. 27-22, Westview by five. 2.50 to go in the first half. Brady Yoder in the corner, brings it out on the wing, then goes right side to Miller, Lyndon Miller. Charlie's triple teamed, and we have a reach-in foul. It's going to be called on Fairfield. Well, Charlie's done a nice job in this game, but when he gets the ball on the baseline and, and gets triple teamed, he's not allowing it to, to get there and, and really force him into a bad situation. I was wondering when they're going to call a foul. He's, he's had hands all over him the last several possessions, and they haven't called anything. Yeah, uh, Dahl comes out. He's really hurting that left shoulder. Went all the way to the end of the bench, holding it, grimacing in pain. Charlie hits his free throw. 28-22. One more for Charlie. And that one goes. Nine now for Charlie. Fairfield gets it all the way down. Ball stolen away by Blake Egley. He'll get it to Lyndon Miller, now Charlie. Charlie to Linden, right side. Now Brady from the corner right side. No good, tipped around and chased down by Lyndon Miller and we have a traveling violation on Linden. Good effort that time though by Luke. Good shot, that was a really good shot by Brady, just a hair long. But we've kind of regained our poise, or our footing I should say. I don't think we ever really lost our poise too much but we've kind of steadied things out here a little bit. With the ball is Kripe, he's double teamed. Trying to trap. Bontrager now way out front to Sherrick. Left side will go to Kripe. He drives, and he's going to be fouled. Going to be Mason again. That'll be his third. And that will send Dalton Kripe to the free throw line, shooting one and one. Luke. Miller getting set to check in for Westview. Cripe shot is up off the back of the rim, no good. We don't have Dan here keeping stats, but how many free throws have they missed? Well, the front end of one and ones really almost count like two. So they've missed two front ends of one and ones. They've missed this one out of two, and there they missed both. I think they missed another one along the way. So about seven. Yep, they missed both that time, so Westview with it backed out, leading 29 to 22. Yeah, they'd be leading in this ball game had they hit those shots. Yeah, they got the bonus there about halfway through the quarter, and they take advantage of it, at least getting there. Charlie fall away, no good. Shot or the rebounds pulled down by Owen Miller. He'll get it to Sherrick. Now left side to Bontrager, three is no good. And on the way up for the rebound, we have... I think it hit the strap. Yeah, I think so. So it'll be Westview ball underneath the Fairfield basket off to the right. And Westview will bring it back up with a minute 35 to go in the first half. Our Weaver halftime, Weaver, I should say our Weaver furniture sales halftime show coming up at halftime. 
Blake Egley for three, in and out, no good. Sherrick with a rebound, loses a handle, picks it back up, and up he comes the court. Crosses the timeline, drives it down the lane, feeds Bontrager for three, and he hits. Second three of the night for Justin Bontrager. 29-25, back to a four-point game now. Westby with the lead. Yoder works it down and goes right side of Brady in the corner. Brady Yoder, that is. Lyndon Miller, shot from 15, no good. And we have a whistle and a foul's gonna be called on Fairfield. Off the rebound. That's gonna go against oh, Justin, Bontrager. Three, Justin Bontrager. Well, we've had a couple of threes just almost go down. Yep. You miss one on one end, they hit one on the other end, six point swing. So Fairfield's hanging in there right now. Egley's shot is good for the free throw line. In for the Falcons is number 24, Bryce Willard. Lake's third point of the night. Bryce Willard back into the ball game now. Coming out is Dalton Cripe. 30 to 25 is our score, Westview. Still by five as Blake misses his second free throw. Both coaches are going to go in at halftime and take some antacid, I think, with all <laughs> these missed free throws. That's just yeah, something you expect to make. Willard now battling, trying to get through a double team, can't do it, and now he commits the foul. There's There's another example of Luke and his strong hands. They just Luke and Lyndon both have really good hands and. Willard's a strong guy. He is. And he had both hands on that and was protecting it. And Luke still poked it out of there. And Willard reacted right away and got the foul. Tenacious defense by Westview on that left wing. Now let's make some free throws here. We get a double bonus, so no pressure on the first one to not get a second. Luke gets his first free throw. Three now for Luke tonight. Builds the Westview lead to six. 37.8 seconds to go in the first half. Second shot is good again by Luke. That's a big confidence booster for Luke right there. He struggled a little bit at the line at times this year. Looked pretty comfortable on those. Owen Miller in the corner. He's been dangerous from there tonight. Drive into the lane. Now Owen again from that corner, and he hits. Nothing but net for Owen Miller, his third three of the first half. He's got 16 points. Yes, he does. Still have no look pass underneath to Lyndon Miller. Misses a shot, but he's fouled. And let's see if that's going to be a two-shot foul. It will be. Well, that 1-2-2 two, two we're running, if you don't get that trap and get them out of their rhythm, those corners are open. And Fairfield's doing a great job of getting it there, and they're hitting the shots. So. Be interested to see in the second half if there's an adjustment we make on that. Or maybe we pull it off for a while and throw it back on because they've kind of adapted to it and are playing pretty well against it. He's been pretty much a dead eye from that corner. Lyndon Miller hits both free throws. He has four for the night, 34-28 now. 10.4 seconds to go and Fairfield will have to bring it the length of the court. Yeah, I think we would have wanted a last shot there, but we got a layup, so we took it. Sherrick across the timeline. Now with five. Inside pass of Feed Willard. He'll put it up. Miss the shot. Tipped up and go. And that was Bayless. Bayless. Riley Bayless scores his first two points of the ball game right at the buzzer. And that makes it a four-point ball game at halftime. Westfield 34, Fairfield 30. Jamie will be back with halftime scoring right after this. 60-second timeout. What makes this place so special? Community. That's just short, sweet, but it's community. We've got parents that are supportive of the schools, they're supportive of their kids, they're supportive of the teachers. And that makes this place really special. I'm not sure that 100% of everybody is going to always agree on that's what's best for kids. But you do what you believe is best for kids. And you do that every day. And you don't have to worry about 
what are the powers to be going to say or what, what's going to happen or are we going to have a population revolt or something? No. And our results bear it out. I mean, we've got, we're right there. We're turning out students that are accomplishing all kinds of stuff. You know, we've never had a low expectation for students here. Winning is a goal. Nobody says, my goal is to finish last. We have good programs in drama. We have good, great programs in music. We have great programs in being servants for the community. Test-wise, man, we're right on top. We're right on top. In the area, in the state, we're way up there. Whether they go from here into the workforce, whether they go from here into business, whether they go from here to college, and graduate school, and med school, don't figure we're done. We're not done. We got a goal, be the best, and that still doesn't end. Because you, you can still be a little better. We're on to what matters more, and that's, or do our kids finish? Where do they finish in life? I, I don't care about the ball game. Where do they finish in life? And I think we're doing a, I think we're doing a pretty darn good job. Welcome back to Fairfield High School with about seven minutes to go at halftime. We are looking at a 34-30 lead for Westview. First quarter, Westview jumped out to a dominating 18-5 lead. And Fairfield scored 25 points in that second quarter, which is, they averaged 40 per game on the year. So that's just... They had a great quarter. Let's you think that way? You think Coach Yoder is going to mention that at, in the locker room at all? Well, I think that might come up. <laughs> that might be a topic of conversation. Probably. Yeah. Well, for Fairfield, they I don't know. I don't think. I don't know if they made any three pointers in the first quarter or not. At the most, they made one, but they they either had four or five of them in the second, and that kept them in the game. And almost, if they'd hit their free throws, they'd be in the lead. Let's take a look at the individual. Justin Bontrager, a 5'10 senior, number three, had two three-pointers for six points. Riley Bales had, number, had two points, 5'10 senior. Nolan Sherrick, their leading scorer on the year, had two field goals and a free throw for five. Cade Gall added a free throw. And the sharpshooter in the first half, Owen Miller, a 6'1 senior, had 16 points on three three-pointers, two two-pointers, and three free throws. And that was on the scouting report as their most accurate catch and shoot shooter. Owen Miller. Owen Miller. And so, he only had what six, I think, or five last week against or against oh, in the week. last game. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's been open more than I expected, and Deshaun has given them the freedom to shoot it when they're open, and they're they're capitalizing in the first half for Westview. Very balanced effort tonight. Charlie Yoder has got nine points. He's got a three-pointer, two two-pointers, and two free throws. Ben Burkett didn't score. Mason Yoder had two nice layups off fast breaks for four points. Blake Egley had a free throw and a two-pointer for three points. Lyndon Miller, a field goal and two free throws for four. Drew Litweiler had two field goals for four. Luke Miller had a field goal and two free throws for four points. And rounding out the scoring tonight is Brady Yoder. He had six on two three-pointers. And he also took two charges out there. So Brady was a big spark off the bench there in the first quarter. And then I don't know what to say other than that was Fairfield's quarter, and there's not much else you can say. It's done with. And, you know, I, I mentioned that uh, in the timeout that Fairfield's lack of offense, make, you know, they struggle with that. And for them to come out and put 25 points on the board, you could see at halftime they were chest bumping and yeah, they were really they were feeling good about, about themselves. Right. So 
That can happen on their home court. They get rolling a little bit. We have a few breakdowns defensively. And, uh, you know, just lose your concentration a little bit, and it doesn't take much. They're high school players. They practice just like we do, and they hit their shots that quarter better than we did. And so Westview has to come out this half. I think it's uh, it's our ball to start. To, it's Westview's ball to start the second half and come out and do what do how they started the game and work the ball, get it inside, then outside, get it to our scores and just settle down, but I think it starts on defense. We're scoring enough easily to win. You know, at this pace, we'll right. score almost 70 points, and that should be enough to win almost any game unless you're playing, you know, Muncie Central or something. Right. <laughs> right. Four a, one of the better 4A schools that have, you know, offensive weapons at eight positions. But uh, give Fairfield credit. I think their defense uh, was better than the last game. I think they did a better job on Charlie. They're making him go right every possession. They're not losing their focus. And they're they're executing uh, what I would assume would have been DeChone's game plan very well and keeping us in check offensively. Right. Yeah, we saw a little bit of that with uh, where the way they worked Charlie last week, but not to the extreme that they have tonight, the consistency. Yeah, I thought so. it might be that way because first time you play a team, especially a coach at a new program, you just don't quite know how you match up exactly, and they got a feel for it. We've talked about Randy Deshaun being very experienced, very successful as a coach, and he's made adjustments. Um, I still think that Westview has the advantage. We have more offensive threats, and if we just clamp down a little bit on defense, I think that's going to show in the second half. Right. So it could be a totally different story. Fairfield did have trouble getting the ball through the net in the first half of this ball game. They missed a lot of bunnies underneath, and they were missing a lot of shots from the free throw line, so this score could be totally turned around. Right. You forget that first quarter how many shots they had around the right. basket, and they were missing their three-pointers, and that enabled us to get a 13-point lead. And uh, second quarter that they made them. So just a good old good old ball game is sure what we is. got out there. Leslie well, should be fortunate they have the, the lead. Anyway, both teams still in their locker room. I'm sure they have plenty to talk about. So Westview now popping out. We'll be back with the second half right after we take this 30-second timeout. If you're looking to replace or repair your home appliances, Topeka Do It Best Hardware is your local stop for Amana, Maytag, and Whirlpool appliances. Featuring in-home and in-store service and parts on most makes of home appliances, See JJ for all your appliance needs at Topeka Do It Best Hardware, an authorized Whirlpool and Maytag service center for over 40 years, located at the Blinker Light in downtown Topeka. Call them at 260-593-2973. We're back, both teams out on the hardwood. I think you can look at the conference standings coming into tonight's play. Prairie Heights at the top with a five and one record. Central Noble, Westview, Cherubusco, and Fairfield all with just one loss, however. Central Noble with four wins. Westview, of course, with four wins. Busco with three, and Fairfield with three wins. Of course, Central Noble beat Prairie Heights for the championship of the, of the tournament the other, other night, which I think maybe registers as a mild upset. Oh, it was. Uh, I think they were without Malone that game. I, he was having trouble with shin splints the, the whole week, apparently, from what I heard. That would make so, a difference. Yes, it would. <laughs> you could lose a big guy like that. Well, that and I think it shows, you know, Central Noble, we, they always are explosive offensively. But Perry Heights was only giving up, I think, 40 points a game right. on the season. And to give up 76? Yeah. <laughs> that I shows how, how important Malone is in there in the middle. Oh, my. Yeah, 6'9 guy. Definitely. Well, he just, the, you know, he's an eraser. He, right. he erases mistakes that you make defensively out on the perimeter. Right. Westview inbounding to begin the second half. Litweiler with it. Westview move. Working to the basket to our left. It's like Fairfield's in a box and one or a zone. Looks like a zone, they're, the way they're shifting. Egglake gets it to Drew Litweiler now between the circles to Luke Miller inside of Charlie. Charlie looking for room, can't find it. He'll get it to Linda. Now to Blake for three. It's going to be short. 
Tipped out, grabbed by uh, Willard. Still a battle on the floor. <laughs> and it's eventually grabbed, knocked out to Litweiler. No look pass from Charlie. Inside, turnaround jumper by Linden. It's no good, but he's fouled. It'll be a two-shot foul coming for Linden. Miller. Nice no-look pass that time by Charlie. I thought that was a important possession, and we showed a lot of fight right there, getting on the ground. And then sometimes after a scramble like that, you'll throw it out and you'll take the first shot you get. But we did right. not. We threw it inside, got a nice post-up shot from Luke. Or Linden, excuse me. No, it is Luke. It is Luke. Yep, you're right. Luke at the free throw line, and he hits his first. He'll get one more. He has five for the night now. Second shot in the air, good. Well, we're still on our 1-2-2. Two, two. We'll meet him at half court here. Lob is intercepted by Charlie, and he'll bring it down and then be fouled by Willard. Willard that's his fourth. He's going to come out of the ball game. Bryce Willard, the senior, comes out. Coming in will be Dalton Kripe, a 6'1 junior. Yeah, I'm not sure why. I mean, he obviously took that foul intentionally to, to stop the play, but having three fouls, I'm not sure at that point in the game it was really that necessary. He looked like he regretted it right after he did it. <laughs> He's like, oh, wait, I had three? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was exactly the feeling I think he had. Shot by Litweiler from threes. No good. Blake Eggley with a rebound. Litweiler. No good. Charlie tips it up and in. Good effort that time again. 11 now for Charlie. 38-30. Westview up eight. Fairfield with it. Inside pass. Cripe. He'll get it to Bayless. Now the three in the air. In and out. Halfway down. Botrier can get it to go. Sherrick had the offensive rebound but loses it. Charlie picks up the ball. I think it might have been Luke that slapped it out of there. Good defense by Luke Miller. Charlie Yoder tries to drive, gets it into the paint, dishes it off to Litweiler. Good ball movement around the perimeter now, inside to Charlie. He'll, he'll put it up, score, and he's fouled. Yeah, you could, I have a feeling one of the keys, we talk about keys to the game, one of the keys to halftime in that locker room, I think it might have been ball movement, which Boy. was needed because it was a little poor there in the late second quarter. And now, Coach Deshaun wants to talk things over with his crew. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. 6.09 to go in the third quarter. We'll keep it right here. Westview's lengthened their lead to 10 points after going into the locker room with just a four-point lead. So, Well, I think more than anything, the 6 nothing is great. It's the effort right. that's the difference out there right now. That first possession... We had three or four guys on the floor going after that ball, and we've had multiple offensive rebounds and the ball movement, and on defense, we've got a couple steals, and that's that's just hustle. And you ask, well, why does that stop? Well, you know, nobody plays perfect all the time, and that's why you have a coach to kind of refocus you and get you doing the things you do best. The intensity level has definitely picked up here in the third quarter, 40 to 30. Been a good ball game. The girls game earlier tonight was good for about three quarters. Well, actually, the first half was really good, but then yeah. Fairfield really cut it loose in that second half. Yeah, I half. showed up. It was 28-28. Yeah. I was like, whoa. Charlie hits his free throw. To complete the three-point play. 14 points now for Charlie. Well, that last play, Charlie had at least three Fairfield players on him and maybe four. And he just powered it up and in and got a and one. That's just a testament to working hard over the years in the weight room. Nolan Cherick with Riley Bayless. Don't get it across the timeline. Bayless looking for help. Double team. Bounce passes it down to Bontrager. Now to Sherrick. Sherrick will put it up from the free throw line. Hits off the back of the iron. No good. Charlie Yoder comes up with the rebound. He'll bring it down. Takes it down the lane. Puts it up and he's hacked from behind. It's either going to be uh, Kriper. No, it's going to be oh, Sherrick. We've changed the way we're trapping out there just a little bit, and Fairfield's yet to figure it out. And the other thing, a positive for Westview in that possession, is we had three people grab that rebound. Yep. <laughs> That's right. And we sped up the shot a little bit, too. 
Charlie misses his first free throw. He'll get another and he hits. 15 now for Charlie. 42-30, Westview by 12. Fairfield in bad need of a bucket here. And it's stolen away on the attempted inside pass. Down court, shots up, no good. Tipped up and in by Luke Miller. Linden missed, or Luke missed, and then Linden tipped it in. Wright picks up his third foul. Fairfield going to another timeout. That last one was 30 seconds ago. This will be a, yeah, it was. <laughs> or no, 30, well, roughly 40 seconds. It'll be a full timeout here. We'll take a 30 second timeout. 5.28 to go in the third quarter. Westview has built a 14 point lead. Back right after this. Does your paint job need a refresh? Got too many dings and scratches? Let Hyde Auto Body take care of it for you. No matter the type of vehicle, motorcycle, trailer, or truck cap, Hyde Auto Body's experienced paint specialists will attend to every detail so you don't have to. We aim to be number one in customer service and your satisfaction is always guaranteed. We're located west of State Road 9 on US 20. Hyde Auto Body, a trusted name in the community for over 20 years. Jerry Hesteller with Jamie Miller back with you at Fairfield High School. Third quarter, 5.28 to go. This is actually our biggest lead of the game. You're right. <laughs> yeah, it just didn't seemed like it was it. just a, we were like teetering on the edge of going from going behind. Right. Definitely a game of runs today. 14 point lead now. Now 15 as Linden completes a three point play. Back comes Fairfield now. With it on the right side is Bayless. He'll work it out front now to Owen Miller, to Sherrick. Left side to Bontrager. Right back to Owen Miller. It's Fairfield moving the ball quickly around the perimeter. Owen with a long three. And it's nothing but net. The fourth three of the night for Owen Miller. Well, he is locked in, and I'm not sure why we're leaving him open, but. 19 points for Miller. Litweiler inside. Shots up, no good. And Charlie Yoder drives in and throws it. Or, Taps it out of bounds, so it'll be Fairfield ball. See, Owen scored, what, 19 now? The rest of his right. team has scored. I can't uh, math 12. very well tonight. 14? 14, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Nolan Sherrick gets it to Owen Miller. Sherrick between the circles. They go left side to Bontrager in the corner, back to Owen Miller in the, on the wing. Dontrager down low now to go to Gall. Gall fighting for position underneath, and he is fouled. I don't think that's going to be a shooting foul. Maybe it is. Foul's going to go against Blake Eggley, who got his hand in there and slapped it. And yeah, it will be a shooting foul. That will send Cade Gall, six foot senior, to the free throw line. He has one point tonight, and now two as he sinks that free throw. Well, those timeouts from Fairfield seem to have settled them down a little bit. They moved the ball well. If you move the ball well against pressure, something good's going to happen eventually. Second shot by Gall is good. 10 point lead for Westview, 45 35. Four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Luke Miller fakes the three from the top of the circle. He'll feed Charlie. We're a little stagnant right now, so I'd like to see this ball get moving a little quicker. Cross courts it now to Blake Egley on the left wing. Out front between the circles to Luke Miller. Now to Charlie on the elbow left side. He bounce passes it to Luke. Lost the handle but re grips it. Out front, almost stolen away by Nolan Sherrick. Inside, tipped out of bounds by Fairfield's Cade Gall. We're having trouble moving it right now. The Warrior spacing is not very good. We got a lot of guys around the free throw lane area and there's not a lot of good passing angles. Charlie gets it. Out front now to come to Luke. Luke drives and we're gonna have a charging foul. No, the no. basket's gonna count. Luke hits the That's basket right and he'll go to the free throw line. The foul's called on Kate Gall. That's a heck of a move there because they were giving him about six feet to start with because he right. was at the three-point line. And for him to take one dribble, that's just real explosive right there. Oh. 
Fearful Luke. getting a little bit of foul trouble now. It's the second player with four fouls, two seniors. Yeah, they have, uh, well, Cade Gall just picked up his fourth, and Bryce Willard, of course, with four. And Luke completes a three point play. Forty eight thirty five Westview by 13. Sherrick at the free throw line puts it up misses rebound Charlie Westview on the run takes it down the lane and we got a foul inside Charlie could get the shot off and we are already in Westview's already in the one on one. Wow <laughs> we are. Well we better make our free throws we're going to get a lot of chances. Charlie's hit four from there tonight now five as he hits that one he'll go to another. Well, it's always amazed me just the like how contagious free throw shooting is. A couple of guys yeah. miss, seems like more guys miss. They sink true. a few and all of a sudden it just it's like you're expected to make them then. Charlie hits them both. 17 now for Charlie Yoder. 50 to 35. Westview now with the biggest lead of the game. Foul inside. It's going to be. I think they got it on Charlie. Yeah. They call it on Blake. Oh, okay. So Blake picks up his third. And Fairfield will be inbounding underneath their own basket off to the right. Blake comes out of the ball game along with Lyndon Miller. I missed it. What happened? They. That was an inbounds play, and we fell asleep, and they got a layup out of it. And you know who scored it? Oh, um, 13. I don't know. Anyway, I did not see. puts a couple more points on the board. 50 to 37. Yeah. Went to sleep. Litweiler on the other side puts it up off the glass. It's good on the feed from Charlie. That comes Fairfield now. Owen Miller being double teamed on the wing left side. Gets it to Bob Traeger, tries to save it from going out of bounds. It's right into the hands of Charlie Yoder. Brings it across the timeline. Goes left side in the corner to Mason Yoder who's just come in. Back to Charlie. Charlie has it knocked away, stolen by Sherrick. Two on one break. Sherrick will put it up and Two off the glass and go. Seven now for Nolan Sherrick. Yeah, a little bit too much dribbling that time for Westview. We need to move the ball and we'll get a good shot. Give and go to Charlie from Luke Miller and we have a whistle and a foul underneath. So the, once again, Charlie will go to the free throw line. Riley Bayless picks up his third foul. 2.22 now to go in the third quarter. Charlie at the free throw line. And it goes. We'll get one more. 15 from the 15, no, eight, 18 points now for Charlie. He's already got as many this half as he had last half. And he hits another. 54 to 39. Sherrick at the free throw line, backs it out, then goes left side to Owen Miller. Can't get the three off this time. <laughs> we uh, paid a little special attention to him that time. Well, there he's open again. There's a shot, and it's good again. He's just unconscious tonight. His fifth three point play for Owen Miller, the sophomore. It seems like about 10. Yeah, it does. 15 for, from beyond the arc. Two regular field goals and three free throws. Charlie with the ball, backs it out, gives to Mason, wide open for three, and it's long. Grabbed by Kripe, and now Fairfield's on the run. Pass underneath, intercepted by Mason. Good hustle getting back. Baseball pass down to Charlie, and he'll lay it in. Well, that was a, showed a lot of maturity that time by Mason. He missed the three and just raced back down, and you could just see him eyeing the passer. He just yeah. knew he was going to yep. steal that thing, and he did. And it turned, that was a big four-point turnaround right there. Good anticipation by Mason Yoder. Lyndon Miller back in for his brother, Luke. Yeah, he's kind of rotating them to keep them fresh. They're playing really hard out there. It takes a little bit extra effort to play that one-two-two -two trap because you're sprinting so much. It's been a, yeah, that's, it's been a tough physical running fast paced ball game tonight. Cripe 
Gets it to Bontrager out front. Cross court from Bayless over to Miller. He'll drive, puts it up, misses, it spins out, but he's fouled. And the foul this time will go against Lyndon Miller. That'll be his second. That'll send Owen Miller to the free throw line, shooting one and one. Just kind of a thought that we might be hearing that name for a few years. I know, he's only a sophomore. <laughs> Shots up and it goes in. Well, it's his night because everything's going in. That Bouncing one. free throws around. I don't know if he's even hit the rim yet on his three-pointers. I tell you, he's been a dead eye from beyond the arc. Second shot up, but this time it won't go. Rebound Charlie with one hand. Charlie brings it up, Nolan on him. We'll go right side, Brady Yoder in the game. Mason Yoder back out front to Brady, down to Litweiler, high on the wing, right side. Drew gets it to Brady between the circles. Now to Lyndon Miller. Westview will try to go for the last shot of this third quarter. 35 seconds to go. Westview with a 56-43 lead. Lyndon fakes the three, gives to Mason. He'll swing it back out to Brady. He'll put up the runner off the back of the iron. No good. Tipped up and grabbed off the Westview rim by Kripe. 18 seconds. Owen Miller now. Now to Sherrick. Sherrick almost has it stolen. He'll get it into the corner to Bontrager. They'll swing it to Owen Miller. Eight seconds to go. Now down to three. Owen Miller drives and rolls it in. Shot! Oh, that almost went in. I don't know whether it was a counter, but last second ditch effort by uh, Lyndon Miller. Shot won't go. So we played three quarters here at Fairfield. And our score, Westview 56, Fairfield 45. We'll be back with a fourth quarter right after this 60-second timeout. turning your house into a home, your furniture plays a big part in the finished product. You'll love the finished products at Weaver Furniture Sales in Shipshawana. Come see the Weaver family. They will work with you to find a piece that fits your needs, or they'll have it custom built just for you. Weaver Furniture Sales is located just south of 5 and 20 in Shipshawana. Visit their website at weaverfurnituresales.com. Westview by 11 of, as we begin the fourth quarter. Fairfield will inbound to begin the period. That was oh. more like an average quarter of what this rivalry has been this year, where we're outscoring them from about, about five to seven points. We've had some aberrations both ways, but that was, a, that was pretty normal. I'd take another normal quarter here. Fairfield with it. They out, or Westview outscored them 22-17 in that third quarter. Westview's taken off the 1-2-2 and is just going with straight man-to-man -man right now. Bayless drives the baseline left side, feeds it inside and has it rejected as Willard tried to go up for the shot. And Charlie Yoder blocked it. Brady from the corner right side. He hits another three. Brady his third. Brady Yoder his third three of the night for Westview and they've built a 59-45 lead now. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll stay in the possession of Fairfield underneath their own basket. They'll attempt to inbound. It'll be Nolan Sherrick triggering it in for the Falcons. Nolan feeds it into Willard. Willard tries to get it to Nolan Sherrick, but Charlie put his long arms out and stole it. Now Litweiler drives and puts it up on no dribble. <laughs> that, was a, that was an awkward catch and finish right there in the center with your wrong leg, but good job in finishing. Shots no good underneath by Fairfield. Rebound, Westview. Now we have a whistle, and what do we have? Mason's getting gonna get called for a foul away from the ball. Defense. 
Looks like there might have been some, some maybe talk back and forth and then maybe some pushing and shoving away from the basketball. It's going to be a double foul, it looks like. I think he called it an intentional foul. Oh, an intentional foul. So that's, it's on Mason. So I, we didn't see it. We were watching no, the ball. We didn't Mason see it. Mason was behind the play, so. I'm going to guess it had something to do with him and Willard. I'm not, I didn't see anything, but. Sometimes when that happens, it's the second guy that gets caught. So now Rob's calling the official that called it. Now Rob's pretty heated. He's saying it needs to go both ways. Uh, well, I think what he's saying is you didn't see what happened leading up to that. Yeah. Willard misses the free throw now. Shots up a good second. That'll be his first point of the night. Now Fairfield will inbound it. Yeah, that was kind of a random call there out of nowhere. There might have been something that led up to it, you know, pushing back and forth, a lot of physicality underneath the. Yeah, I think what I'd like to see there is let the play. We had, uh, West, we had a fast break opportunity there. Let that finish, and then if you want to call something. Shot inside, Yoder, or Miller rather, Owen Miller gets it to spin in. So we had a 16 point lead and the ball there, and now it's down to 13. <laughs> so it's quite the yo-yo game. Yoder, Charlie Yoder out front, got bump, no call. Mason, bounce pass across the lane to Litweiler. Grady again for three, this time it's gonna be long. Rebounds pulled down by Litweiler, he'll put it up and score off the glass. Drew with 10. Well, I think that call fired us up. I think so. <laughs> it looks like it. Man. That, uh, they were pounding Charlie pretty hard out there while he had the ball. And don't, you don't want to poke the giant, do you? I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, he's had a relatively mild game with 21 points. Right. He had an opportunity to dunk in this quarter, and he didn't. Yeah, he took it nice. Right. Well, that last shot by Brady, uh, he was so open, he kind of double, double right. thought it. He thought too much on that shot. Cripe with it. He'll go out front to Gall. Gall takes it right side, tries to drive on Litweiler. Good, good defense by Drew. Now he'll drive around, put it up. Can't get it to go off the glass, but he's fouled, and Drew will pick up the foul. Yeah, that was, that was one where he stayed in front of him, did a great Miles job, Gall kept going, and if he had just stayed straight up, that would have been a real difficult Two shot to make. Instead, he swiped down on the ball. And Those are going to get called about nine times out of ten, probably more like ten out of ten in high school. Shots up and good by Gall. Especially in this game. You know, we've seen some games this year where there's just hardly any fouls. Right. And this game has not been one of those. And I don't think any of these officials wanted to get out of hand. Gall's second free throw is no good. And the rebound's pulled down by Lyndon Miller. He'll give it to Charlie. Left side of Mason, inside to Charlie. He'll put it up and we have a charging foul that's gonna be called on Charlie. Down on the baseline, Charlie going for the basket. Well, that's the Fairfield a player anticipating his first move that time. Whether it was a charge or not, that's debatable, but they did a good job of getting in position at least. 63-49, Westview with the lead, Fairfield with the basketball. Still plenty of time, 5.40 to go in this ball game. Now we have a timeout that's gonna be called. Second to the last timeout, I'll say. Yeah, 30 seconds timeout. Kind of wonder why they called that, but he must have had something to communicate with his players because well, that's. Yeah, it looked like we were running something a little different out there defensively, and they were kind of. Fairfield's handling the pressure pretty good, but they're not really looking at the basket. They're just trying to survive more than anything with the ball, and that won't get you many points. So we're going to try to, we're going to try to set some strategy, I would guess. 63-49 is our score. By the way, if you're just tuning in, the Westview girls were defeated by the Fairfield Lady Falcons, 58 to 41 in game one here tonight. Tomorrow night, the boys will be in action down at Garrett. We'll bring you that contest. It'll be much like tonight. 
live audio delayed video from Garrett High School. Cade Gall gets the inbound pass as we've resumed action. Bounce pass goes left side to Kripe. Kripe holds. He's guarded by Charlie. Tries to drive on him, does, goes around, puts it up off the glass and good. First two of the game for Kripe. 12 point lead for Westview. Charlie inside, shots up by Litweiler and it goes and he's fouled. I don't, I haven't kept stats on Charlie tonight. He has got to have close to 10 assists. He's got a bunch of them. I would think he's no doubt. A, Yep. I could be way off on that, but I remember a lot of ditch offs and he's had a lot of rebounds. He could be approaching triple double territory. <laughs> that could be. Luke Miller comes in. Mason comes out for Westview. So we got Brady Yoder, Charlie Yoder, Lyndon Miller, Luke Miller, and Drew Littweiler at the free throw line, and he completes the three-point play. First well, there's a confidence booster for Drew. 13 now for Drew tonight. Coming off a 17-point performance in that loss to Prairie Heights in the NECC. His high-point game. And we have a whistle with a hold going to be called. That's going to be on Brady. And now Fairfield's in the one and one At one time, it was eight to three. Fairfield had eight fouls. We had three. Now it's nine to seven. So that's tightened up. And this could be a long five minutes. It could be. <laughs> 4.55 to go. Justin Bontrager hits his free throw. He'll get one more. Back into the game will be Riley Bayless, maybe depending on the outcome of this free throw. Justin Bontrager, and it's missed, and Charlie Yoder pulls it out. Charlie brings it across the timeline. He'll get the pick from Luke Miller. Baseball pass underneath the Linden. He'll put it up and can't get it to go. Well, he, got, he got fouled twice on that shot with no call. Now he should have an offensive foul, but it's going to be a blocking foul on Charlie, It'll be foul number three on Charlie Yoder. Well, it's really unusual when you give a pump fake, two players go up in the air, both of them come down on you, <laughs> you don't get a call. That was, yeah, now they seem to, you know, they were letting, letting everybody play on that last series down there, but quick call on Gall as he'll be at the free throw line. Shots up and good. Gall with all his points from the free throw line tonight, five now. 13 point ball game, Westview leads it, 66-53. 4.36 to go. Second shot is good by Gall. We'll be surprised to see us at maybe another few possessions to go something like spread. And a traveling violation call on Lyndon Miller on the wing left side. We're at a point in the game now, it's just, it's kind of teetering a little bit, you know? Yeah. Uh, Westview hasn't been able to pull away. Fairfield's got a little bit of momentum. Maybe we want to shorten this game a little bit. Go spread, run the clock a little bit. Drive by Sherrick, too hard off the glass and let's get Charlie Yoder with a rebound to, to Litweiler underneath and Drew puts it in. Drew. Yeah, great run ahead by Drew that time. Another assist by Charlie. Sherrick gets it down low to Owen Miller. The runner is no good. It's long. Pulled down by Willard. He'll put it up and go as he falls to the ground. Uh, I thought there was a foul that time on Brady. He had the rebound. and Litweiler puts it up. Can't get it to go. Now Charlie's going to get called for being up. Over. No, it's going to be Willard. That'll be it for Willard. Willard for riding him out. Yeah, that, well, I guess that was a good call. That'll be it for Bryce. 5'10 senior comes to the bench. That will send Charlie Yoder to the line, shooting one and one, or two, rather. Misses the first, he'll get one more. 68-56, Westview with a 12-point lead. And now 13 as Charlie hits his second free throw. Cade Gall gets the ball in 
to Riley Bayless for Fairfield, and he crops it across the timeline. Bounce pass right side comes to Gall. Gall will bring it out front. Picks up his dribble there, looking for the pass. Gets it to Owen Miller. He'll take it down on the left wing and then pull it out front to Bontrager, top of the circle. Charlie comes out on him now, and he unloads a pass to Riley Bayless. Bayless backdoored up Owen, and he puts it up and in. Yeah, we've been, Westview's been getting beat backdoor tonight more than, than we're used to seeing. We're not, uh, we're not picking up on some of their cues on offense. 29 points for Owen Miller for Fairfield. Ball inside, stolen away by Fairfield. Yeah, force pass that time. Sherrick to Bob Trigger, and Charlie comes over and swats it out of bounds. That's a big play that time, because they hit that shot. That's, uh, we're down to eight. Right. <laughs> Under 10, and it, yeah, it would have been. 69-58 is our score currently. 2.53 to go in the game. With the ball is Riley Bayless. Way out front, Brady Yoder on him. And Bayless is getting the count. Now he'll go right side with it, drives it toward the basket, knocked away, and now we got a breakaway by Charlie, and he's going to dunk. So that was big, and now... Uh, and Fairfield just used their last timeout. Right. Final timeout for Fairfield. Well, if it's, you're a Westview fan, there's nothing quite like Duncan on Fairfield. <laughs> <laughs> and we figured it would happen on that one because it was a breakaway. 71-58, 2.30 to go in the ball game. Timeout called by Fairfield. As we mentioned, it's their last. Well, that was a big possession there. First, Charlie stops the three. Well, we don't know if he'd have made it or not, but stops the potential three-pointer. And we get the steal and throw it ahead, and that's a five-point swing with a little exclamation point. 71-58, two and a half minutes to go in the ball game. As I mentioned, we travel to Garrett tomorrow night. Fairfield inbounding. Sherrick will walk it across the timeline for Fairfield. What Fairfield's gone to in the last several possessions is they're trying to isolate. Ball stolen away. Now Lyndon Miller with a breakaway, but Sherrick hustling back, knocked it out of bounds. So it'll stay in the possession of Westview. I like how we're still being aggressive. We're hustling out there, no doubt. Well, we had 75 the last time we played them, and we're on pace to hit that at least in this game. Linden inbounding to Luke. Right side in the corner, out front now to come to Charlie. Charlie inside the lane to Linden, right back to Charlie. He drives, puts it up off the glass and inside, or in. 26 now for Charlie. 73-58. Inside two minutes to go in the ball game. With the ball is Gall. Shot, no good, or pass inside. Charlie steals it, brings it up. Knocked out of his hands, and it's grabbed by Bontrager. Bontrager is fouled by Charlie. That'll be his fourth. Burkett coming into the ball game for Charlie. Uh, it's coming for Linden. Or for Linden, yeah. Fourth foul on Charlie. That will send Justin Bontrager to the free throw line. Shots up, in and out, no good. The rebound's pulled down by Drew Litweiler. That was a big miss. Minute and a half to go. Westview's going to spread it out. Brady with it now out front. Other side, double teamed. We have a reach in foul on Fairfield. Foul's on Fairfield number. It's going to be on Owen Miller, his first. Make it his Foul's second. On Owen Brady Yoder will be at the free throw line for Westview. Brady, all his points coming from beyond the arc until just now he hits his free throw. So well, Brady has turned in a 
pretty reliable scorer, you know. He has three threes. And he misses a second free throw. Has 10 on the night, back in double figures. Had 12 against uh, Hamilton and Fairfield. Shot from the corner by Bottrager. It's no good. The rebound drew Litweiler. Minute 10 to go in the game. Westview 74, Fairfield 58. Pass from Brady to Charlie. He drives it. Gives off to Lynn, or Luke. They'll swing it around now. Burkett with it. Burkett tries to lob it inside to Charlie. Hits off the glass and into the hands of Luke Miller. Brady with it way out front to Litweiler now. Right in front of us as they're spreading it out. Ball knocked away into the backcourt into the Fairfield bench. It'll stay in the hands of Westview. Litweiler will bring it in for the Warriors. Coach Deshaun's going to get some players into the ball game. It looks like Bryce Hunsberger's coming in for the Falcons. Along with Casey Murray. Great and Chuck. Now Westview will unload their back. Good hand from both sides of the gym. Lehman comes in for Westview. Also coming in, Caleb Corey. Drew Litweiler coming out. <laughs> I'm going to say, we had six out there. Hang on. Davis is in for the first time this year. Curtis Davis coming off an ankle injury into the ball game. Drew Miller is into the ball game. So... A whole new five. Drew Miller with it out front. He'll go right side with it to Burkett. 20 seconds to go. Davis now with the ball. Number 15. He'll get it to Drew. Miller hands it off to Davis. Five seconds, and the Westview Warriors are going to pick up their 10th victory of the 2019-20 campaign as they defeat Fairfield tonight by a score of 74 to 58. We'll be back with a wrap up right after this 60 second timeout. Remodeling in the near future? Dale Fry at Dale's Dependable Handyman Service is the right man for the job. Get a new look for your bathroom, kitchen, garage, attic, or anywhere else in your house. Dale is fully trained, licensed, and insured. No subcontractors, just Dale and his son, Owen, will do the job. Call 260-463-3970 or visit dalesdependablehandyman.com. Freedom Finish Works in Topeka specializes in both steel and aluminum. Their 40,000 square foot custom powder coat facility has the flexibility to run everything from one piece custom orders to full production quantities. They also have the unique capabilities of powder coat, class coat, as well as other highly durable coatings. They are your local source for powder coating. Freedom Finish Works in Topeka. Call 260-593-0204. We are back at Fairfield High School where we just completed a 74-58 Westview win. Right now the coaches, excuse me, the players and the cheerleaders from both teams are at center court with a post-game prayer, looks like. That's so, a tradition that's been going on for quite a while. It's yep, very nice. Seems like a good sportsmanship type. After a hard-fought game, that's what it's all about. So that's good to see. Let's take a look at the scoring real quick for West or for both teams. For Fairfield, Justin Von Trigger had six points in the first half, added one in the second, finished with seven. Dalton Kripe added four. Ryan Beals had two. Nolan Sherrick, only seven points tonight. Great defense on him. Kay Gall added six. And Owen Miller is the big man on campus tonight in Millersburg with 29 points on the night. I'm sure that's a, well, I shouldn't be sure. It seems like it's probably a career high. I would think so. He, he was just spectacular tonight. Yep. Charlie Yoder led us tonight. He had 26. Good all-around game. He had to have close to 10, point, 10 rebounds and assists as well. 
Mason Yoder added four, Blake Egley three, Lyndon Miller added seven, Drew Littweiler ended up with 15, one free throw and seven field goals. Luke Miller added nine, and Brady Yoder rounds it out with 10. So we had 10, 9, 15, 7, and 26. So our balance is really starting to, That's to show great. a little yeah, bit. And sure it is. really is. And I thought the key to the game tonight was definitely Blake Eagle was the key to the game tonight. <laughs> his dad, his, <laughs> his dad, his dad walks walked by. by. <laughs> no, I thought the key was Luke and Lyndon and the defensive pressure they and the hustle they showed on both ends of the court tonight. I thought they really, they really stood out in addition to, to some of the other things that that uh, the players did. So good around that all around effort. It was closer like we thought it would be, right. but still a convincing win. Fairfield was never really never really got closer than 10 after we broke it open there early in the third quarter. Just a satisfying win. You go regroup, eat your uh, post game meal and get ready for Garrett. But right back at it tomorrow night <laughs> right back on at the it road. A yep. little bit of a bus trip down there. Garrett again struggling this year. Uh, so uh, let's see where they in action tonight. Uh, I don't see him on the schedule, so they play. Yeah, they play us tomorrow night, and their record will be let's see, tw two and twelve on the year, one and four in the conference. So going through another tough year for Garrett, but we'll be down there to bring you the game once again. It'll be a audio live and video delayed tomorrow night. Westview goes to 10 and 3, 5 and 1 in the North, Northeast Corner Conference. With their win tonight, Fairfield drops to 4 and 9 and 3 and 2. And the final score here tonight, Westview 74, Fairfield 58. And we're glad you could join us. Join us tomorrow night if you can't make it down to Garrett. Tonight's game was brought to you by Tiffany's Restaurant on East Lake Street in Topeka. Featuring nightly specials and a delicious buffet. Hide Auto Body, US 20 West in LaGrange by Topeka. Do it best hardware at the blinker light in downtown Topeka. Also by Topeka Pharmacy, your friendly hometown pharmacy. By Dale's Dependable Handyman Service. Dale is the right man for the job. By Freedom Finish Works in Topeka, your local source for powder coating. Lehman Insurance and Financial Group in Topeka. Their passion is protecting yours. By Jerry Standard Service in Middlebury for your automotive repair and tire service needs. Also by Lake City Bank with over 50 branches in northern and central Indiana. By Topeka Clinic introducing Yana Schenkel, certified nurse midwife, now accepting appointments. And our halftime show and gold sponsor throughout the season has been our friends at Weaver Furniture Sales, south of US 20 on County Road 075 North in Shipshawana. Our individual sponsors are Tim and Donna Height, Dan and Don Byler, Jim and Liz Stump, and Oscar and Sophia Hostetler. That'll do it from Fairfield High School for color commentator Jamie Miller, our camera operator tonight, Chris Mast, and Dan Byler, color commentator from our first game tonight as the girls were defeated by Fairfield 58 to 41 in game one. Westview's boys defeating Fairfield 74 to 58 in game two. This is Jerry Hostetler. Good night, everyone. <laughs>